Hi, I want to talk to you guys today about what makes the cost of energy either go up or go down. Um, I want to start by telling you this is going to be a really general video and if you're truly interested in understanding what moves the cost of energy that shows up in your bill that you have to pay for and if you want to understand a little bit more about how you can protect yourself from those costs you're going to want to go to my YouTube channel and watch some of the longer videos. Carve out time when you have, you know, I'll try to keep them under 15 minutes or so. I'm going to segment them so they're easy to follow. But it'll really, really help you understand at what time and what windows to look for in the market so you can make the best decisions if you have the choice to um, negotiate the cost of your energy. Uh, over half of our country is deregulated for electricity or natural gas. So for most of us, this is something we can kind of do something about. If you can't do anything about it, then it's okay. Don't worry, guys. I have you covered too. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of videos on products that you can use or which equipment you need to be buying so you don't have to get stuck with the higher commodity cost which typically is electricity especially in our island states you guys I'm so sorry I know you're paying close to you know 70 cents and sometimes more when you have a bad weather event and uh, you know I'm in Texas we can't complain our, our cost of electricity right now is you know, around six or seven cents, eight cents, eight and a half cents if you're a homeowner. But if you're a business owner and you're a savvy shop, uh, you know, shopper, a lot of people secured a four cent or five cent rate and they're still paying that. So uh, let's talk about real quickly some of the things that make those prices move around. Um, when you see little pops and you hear people talk about a spike in the marketplace, a lot of times those are related to the weather and in most of the country when we have hot weather that's when you see pricing go up um, people are just using more electricity it kind of makes sense everybody's running their air conditioning businesses work longer hours because people are out there you know that the daytime period is longer air conditioning needs to be run for longer periods of time so your your difference between the summer availability of um, electricity and the infrastructure or all the stuff in the ground and the poles and wires that are strong enough and that have been replaced recently enough that they can actually deliver what you need, um, those things get very taxed and it becomes harder for them to be as efficient. So you see prices go up when the weather's especially hot and you also see them go up when it's especially cold um, and that is due to a different reason uh, which has much more to do with how hard it becomes to actually get electricity through the lines. I'm sure you can imagine um, how hard it must be to continue if a hundred percent of you know electricity starts running through the line how much of it remains through the line uh, when it's traveling through snow and and it just has a lot of obstacles to overcome so we compensate that for that in our grid but that cost shows up in other areas and and you might hear it called to uh, like you might hear it called delivery or capacity depending on where you live um, that's basically how much the energy struggles to get to you so you can be warm or cold or watch YouTube videos. Okay, so weather has a lot to do with the price of energy and how it moves. Uh, also, our energy markets. How much investors are in the mood to purchase. How comfortable big users of energy are with going out and deciding, yes, today's a good day for me to buy all the natural gas and electricity I need for the next three years. So that also drives the market. And a really good tool to use to kind of see if energy is up or down is uh, the NYMEX report. You just Google NYMEX natural gas. Um, if you have an iPhone, you can pull up apps. The stock apps always have a natural gas button. Watch that 
Uh, you can see the five day forecast. When you see it go up steadily and then pe peak down, good day to buy. Um, if you have an energy consultant you work with, they can back that up and hopefully that makes sense when they refer to that. Um, the other major thing is our, uh, you hear it called our storage report. And that basically, and I'm going to go in more depth than that, that actually gets very exciting when we talk about the storage reports because that is the amount of natural gas that we have kitted away at any given time to, to be able to use if we have to pull from it. It's our, it's our nation's storage bank of natural gas. And when that gas report is low, um, that does certain things to the market. And then there are all, kind, all kinds of forecasts that come from that, um, which we'll get into in another video. Uh, but when it's high, then everybody's really comfortable because we have enough. Something really kind of cool is happening right now in natural gas where our storage reports are a little low, but we're we're still super, super cheap with the cost of natural gas. So we'll, we will get into that in another video too. But anyway, I hope you find just these little bits of insight helpful. Um, I hope you share my videos. I hope you come back and learn. Uh, my only objective here is to make sure that you understand how these different things show up in your bills and everyone uses energy so it doesn't matter who you are whether you live in an apartment or you run a, a, a national account and you are all over the country um, everybody should understand how these things affect them so that they can spend their money wisely because we're consumers and it takes us a long time to earn that money and I know it does so I want to help you hold on to as much of it as you can okay uh, thanks. Bye.